Amen. this night. The word says, the Lord reigneth, let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of isles be glad thereof. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. The fire goeth before him and burneth up his enemies round about. His lightnings enlighten the world, the earth saw and trembled. Said the hills melted like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declare his righteousness and all the people see his glory. Confounded be all they that serve graven images, that boast themselves of idols. Worship him, all ye gods. Zion heard and was glad, and the daughters of Judah rejoiced because of thy judgments, O Lord. For thou, Lord, art high above all the earth. Thou art exalted, exalted far above all gods. Says ye that love the Lord, Lord hate evil. He preserveth the souls of his saints. He delivereth them out of the hand of the wicked. Light is sown for the righteousness and gladness for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, ye righteous, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. And on that, let us stand to our feet and lift up hands and praise the wonderful, excellent name of the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for this church service. We thank you, dear Lord God, for the people who are gathered together in your name. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would have your way, Lord. We thank you because you are the great name. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a round of applause. Oh, 
Amen. Big, big nine. Glory to his name. Big, big nine. appreciate your giving and at this time I think Sister Davis is going to sing a special to us as unto the Lord I keep on following up
Take John chapter 6, make it a little like Sunday morning already. John chapter 6. John chapter 6, we're going to hit. Mm. Verse 35. You ready, y'all? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? John chapter 6, verse 35. I was thinking about something I said this morning. <laughs> Ooh, let me turn this up. This thing will go off. Word says, And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, 
that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Verse 41 says, then, the, then it says, the Jews then murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And with the help of the Lord, I want to preach. You can title this all kind of thing. I really don't have a title, but I'm going to take it two ways. You can trust the word of God and doing the will of God. We'll tie it all up, try to make it make sense, but I'm going to talk about trusting the word of God. And the second portion, I want to talk about doing the will of God. Let us pray. Reverend Serrano, if you don't mind asking God's blessing. Thank you, Lord God, for each and every person that is listening in, Lord God, for everyone that's present, Lord. Pray for your spirit to touch in every heart, Lord God, that's listening in to what you're saying. And leading God, Pastor, God, that you laid on his heart, Lord God, to bring it forth in boldness and in truth, Lord. Pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your name be exalted. Amen. Amen. And I'm not being a drag tonight. It's just that the throat kind of kind of irritated. And uh, I feel like somebody has a finger in my throat. That's what I've been going through. It could be nerves or whatever. I've been going through it. The last time I preached hard, uh, it was going to be a couple of years ago, and it never recovered. So so it's a new norm, I guess. And so I have to, I can't be like I used to be. And uh, if, if so, I, it, I'm not trying to teach nobody, but if you try to learn how to preach, do not yell the whole time. If you yell the whole time, guess what? You're going to live with the results. And, and the results is you can't even breathe in too deep without your throat being irritated. I'm telling you, I'm giving you warning. You, you go ah, 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 all you want because once you break something inside of you, guess what? You live with it from that day till you die. <laughs> so do whatever. I think Reverend Serrano probably warned me subtly. I don't know if he's warm or not, but he never, he's never been like, ah. Probably looked at me tripping on me, like, look at this cat right here, he's gonna kill himself. And we've been in the ministry together since, uh, I always say we, since we were kids, but <laughs> early 30s, I mean, and his children are catching up. Yeah. To that age we started. Man, whew, been here too long, man, let's do this. Let's roll with it and get out of that. <laughs> and, all right. I want to encourage you tonight. I want to encourage you that you can trust the word of God. When you read your scripture, I want you to start reading your Bible with an attitude of, I can trust what I'm reading. Amen. Because what it does is it brings hope to you. It causes you to, to really go to another level in your heart. And so when you read scriptures like, then said they unto uh, um, right here, Verse 35, I want to emphasize, I want to get on it. When it says, and Jesus said unto them, unto them, I am the bread of life. So when you read that, you read it in faith. You don't read it in a skeptical way of questioning, but you read this as this is the promise of God. This is something that is an, an absolute. This is a fact. This is a fact that I can trust that Jesus is the bread of life. And so when you read your word that way, all of a sudden you want to dig a little deeper and you want to begin to know what is he talking? What is he talking about? Because we're reading it from the right attitude. We're reading it from the attitude that what the word says is an absolute. He said, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Having faith in those words, believing that those words are true and that they are not something that is made up, again, brings you into a level, into the level of the supernatural. You begin uh, to climb up above the average man. You begin to tap into the very blessings of God. You begin to trust his word. You see his truth and they begin to pull at you. It will begin to affect you. And then you want to study it out. What does he mean by being the bread of life 
and he and I'm, I'm for him that hunger and also uh, I am for the soul that is thirsty what does what happens when someone eats and they get drink well to get someone to eat and to get someone to drink something that means they have to have a hunger and they have to have a thirst there has to be a hunger there and there has to be a thirst there if I'm not hungry, I'm not going to eat. If I'm not thirsty, I'm not going to drink. Meaning, if I'm satisfied and content, then what do I need satisfaction for? But what this is saying is, see, hunger, when someone gets food who is hungry, someone gets drink who is thirsty, it means that uh, uh, when, they be, when they get the, this these substances in them, in their system and everything, it brings a satisfaction, it is a relief. And what Jesus is saying here is that I will satisfy your heart. I will satisfy the need that is in your life. This is a promise from God. He said it in his word. Jesus never told a lie, we all can agree with that. Jesus has never sinned against God. He hasn't ever done uh, anything wrong. So knowing that Jesus has not sinned, let that be the background, knowing that he has not sinned, he has not done anything wrong, and you believe that Jesus will not lie to you, that God is not deceptive. When you believe that, if that's your backdrop, that's the truth, then this scripture is, is wanting to, uh, then you begin to activate this scripture in your life because you are accepting it. You are accepting it as fact. And God will begin to move and he'll begin to satisfy your heart because you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Jesus brings a satisfaction to the soul. He brings a satisfaction to the very mind of a person. When I say soul, I'm talking about his, the mind, the very, the inner man. God is able to bring satisfaction to the inner man. That is the reason why Jesus said that I will fulfill your life. I will bring you into completion if you accept me as your personal Lord and Savior. If you are not happy this morning, that means, or tonight, that means that you are hungry for, you, are, have, a, you have an appetite or a hunger for happiness because it's not there. If you're not content tonight, that means you have a hunger or a, an appetite for being content spiritually speaking. Now, I'm not saying to not desire things or not to, to get better. I'm not going against that. But I'm talking about having a peace, having a satisfaction that, that, that God fulfills in people's life. The Lord can make you happy tonight. He can yeah. put the happiness in there if the person allows Christ to be the center of their life. When God is the center of your life, Joy, the joy of the Spirit comes in, which I believe is one of the first fruits of the Spirit, as it's stated in Galatians chapter 5, where joy, you, you get this, uh, that, that is what comes from the Spirit of God. He will bring you joy and love and peace, and He will help you, and you have to believe that, that God can do this. And this is the thing, though, it cannot get old. This scripture cannot be allowed in your mind to get old. It can't be allowed in your mind, or you cannot build up something that tears it down. We were talking about, I am 47 years old. Not ashamed of it, I'm glad to be 47 years old. And I've learned a lot in life. One thing I've learned in life, if I can get a little personal, is I learned how to work in the heat and um, talking to other people who are in their late 40s, being around other people who are in their late 40s, who, uh, especially people who try to keep themselves healthy or they've had health issues. Uh, I learned something about cramping. And what you do is how to be able to work out in the heat and not, not cramp real hard all the time is that Yes, you have to drink water, but, but you, you need to eat something along with the water that you drink. You need to eat some bananas. You know why? Because you're going to put potassium in there. 
You put potassium back because see what happens is you keep drinking water, keep drinking water, you wash away the minerals that keep you and the vitamins that keep you from cramping. You keep drinking that water, drinking that water, you flush it out, you sweat it out, you drink, 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 and here comes the cramps, hit you and everything. And how did I learn that? I did not learn that in the army. Everybody tells you drink water, drink water, drink water. But I learned it by listening to other people who try to find out about their body. And I learned it uh, by uh, going through some pain. You're going to sleep at night, you cramp, your feet cramp, everything start cramping up. And then I give me some bananas and I take some magnesium. Yeah. So I said, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start <laughs> uh, taking this stuff with me. It, it, uh, because at the time you learn, you learn some things, you know? I'm going somewhere with this. You learn some things. You, you need to eat some bananas and drink water. Don't just drink water because you will cramp out of the sun. Now, being at this royal age, I also learned this. We were talking about fasting and prayer and all that good stuff. And this is something that God's been dealing with me about. All of us, at some point in our lives, if we live long enough, try to build up good habits. We try to make ourselves better. I don't know of too many people who have, who um, hasn't tried to attempt to make themselves better. But we were talking about fasting and prayer, and I said, the bottom line of it is to make your life, you make, uh, it's for you to have a better walk with God. Excuse the way I'm talking. I'm trying to think at the same time, I guess. I'm, I'm trying to move the cobwebs out of my head. To get you to have a better walk with God. But I learned something. I was, I'm going, you know, I've been working on myself and trying to build good habits. And I find myself having a difficult time maintaining it. And so, after being on this rock for a while and thinking about it for a while and wrestling with this thing for a while because we're not quitters, we wrestle with this thing for a while and thinking about it, so how come it seems so difficult to pull yourself up by your bootstrap? This is the thing, brothers and sisters. Number one, you have to keep at it. And once you get something started, you cannot build the old things of the past again. All right, All right? and I'm, I'm going somewhere with this scripture. The um, Apostle Paul said this. He said in so many words, if I build again those things which I once destroyed, I make myself to be a transgressor. When you begin to build a new life and you begin to build your faith up and you say, I'm going to trust the word of God and I can trust what Jesus said, I am the bread of life, and he that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believe on me shall never thirst. You begin to build up that supernatural, uh, if you would, uh, 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 a relationship with God. You begin to build up, where, build it up to where you can feel the very presence of God. That when you pray, a uh, God begins to answer the very desires of your heart. But after time, you got to watch how you build because you can begin to build again unbelief. You can begin to build things that attack the scriptures, things that attack your heart, things that cause you to say, well, I've been looking at this for a long time and give you a bad attitude and a bad approach against God and you will never feel the presence of God and you will never know his miracles and never know his blessings. Why? Because there's another scripture that says, according to your faith, so be it unto you. So that is a warning that uh, we need to make sure that we are building our lives correctly and not, build, and, and not to build again things that once destroyed us. We got to keep the weeds out of our heart. We got to keep the bugs uh, uh, out of the house, if you would. You got to keep the negativity afar away from you. And you have to fight to protect that which you started in your life. You have to fight. Now, there comes a time where, uh, once you, I mean, you, you got to have, the thing is, you can make a good habit, yes, but you have to have a habit of protecting what you started. 
Sometimes people don't have the habit of protecting what they start. They'll start some, something and then, you know, they're not protecting any good that they started. All right, so anyway, this scripture is wonderful in the beginning, but we have to keep believing that God said, I am the bread of life. Verse 35. Verse 36, again, he says, But I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. Jesus said, You've seen my actions, you've seen me, you've, I've been around you, but you don't even believe me. But this, these are the same people who say they hear the voice of God. These are the same people who have said, God told me, and I've read the scriptures and this, that, and the other, and there was God standing right there in front of their face. All right? God was standing right there in front of their carnal face. And I say carnal face because I'm talking about their carnal, their, their carnal uh, mentality. They were not spiritual enough to recognize God standing in front of him because God here, who has put on human flesh, Jesus being the second in the Godhead, God uh, here is talking to them, but he looks so simple. Sometimes we miss things because they are simple. They look so simple, it's not complicated enough. But it's not my opinion and your opinion. We need to do things uh, and see it through the eyes of God to be able to text something that is God. We need to be able to have that walk. And we have that walk when we begin to believe that, uh, when we begin to believe on Jesus Christ by accepting him as our Lord and Savior. You have to have that and you read your scripture and you pray Amen. and you walk with God and then you will know that is God. While the whole world said, that ain't God. Let's keep going. Then here comes another scripture. Jesus is an example to us, and I'm taking it easy tonight. He said, For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. Now, Jesus shows us how to be a Christian. It's more than accepting him as Lord and Savior. All right? Because in, the, in our country, we have people who say, well, I've accepted the Lord as my Savior and this, that, and that. They don't even know what it means and they don't even care to know what it means to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. But to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior is to accept God's will. Now, when I say God's will, that means you surrender. Jesus said, I came not to do mine own will. I'm, in other words, let's read it in our language. I came not to do my own thing. I didn't come down here to do my own thing and walk my own way. Now, now we get into the Trinitarian thing. To believe oneness means that Jesus would have to say, I've come to do my own will. But, but here, knowing the Trinity, knowing the Trinity, that Jesus is not God the Father makes brings more power to this scripture. It brings more power to this scripture because, uh, because of the fact that it is definite, truly understandable that Jesus really did not come to do his own thing. Amen. How can he be an example to us doing his own thing? All right. All right? If he's God the Father, then how would it, then he cannot say, I, can, I did not come to do my own thing. There is something about some people, brothers and sisters, they are willfully ignorant. And, and they are willfully ignorant because they want to be a part of a church association. I'm keeping it real. They want to be a part. They're not willing to study the scriptures. They are willing to be lied to, to in order to be a part of some function that is in error. And I'm amazed. And maybe I shouldn't be saying this online. I'm like, now I'm trying to get folks saved, trying to get people to come to God, but they go in these weird places and everything. And I'm like, now I didn't mean for you to do it like that. Like, study the Bible and read it. Yes. Because you need to know this stuff because uh, you have kids coming up behind you. You got people listening to you. You're not going to be able to reach them if you don't know what you believe and you're just going by what somebody else says. <laughs> All right. And I'm not you can be one that's all you want, but you know good and well that this does not make sense to your intellect. And this is an excuse they use, Rev. Well, 
God can do anything. But I, and God can do anything, but he can't do that right there. Right. Amen. Jesus cannot be the father. He's not allowed to be the father. All right. Neither can God the father be the Holy Ghost. God the father cannot be allowed to be the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost didn't go to hell. The Holy Ghost didn't die on the cross. The Holy Ghost yeah. is not the one who uh, 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 pretty much put the plan of salvation uh, together, the preordained plan of salvation. He's a part of the preordained. He, he, he has his hand in it, but it's not all on the Holy Ghost only. Yes. It's God the Father. He said, this is the will of my Father. Jesus did not say, this is the will of the Holy Spirit. It is the will of the Holy Spirit in unison with God the Father. Yes. But he always references God the Father. It was not God the Father that walked on water. It was Jesus that walked on water. Yes. And right here, it is Jesus speaking. I did not come to do my own thing, but the will of him, the will of him that sent me in. And you go ahead and be willfully ignorant just to be accepted of a, of a bunch. Go ahead. Do that. But I'm not that way. I can't be that way. Right. I couldn't even survive in a place like that. I already know me, man. Because I'd be questioning everything, and then i go into, I'm talking about Rod Davis, I'm just keeping it real. i go into, well, it's confusing, I don't understand it, and i go into accepting everything. You can say, accept any religion, don't matter, because <laughs> I don't understand the one I'm supposed to understand. <laughs> I got to understand, I got to know, and I can be, you know, I can be wrong. Somebody can come and say, hey, you're wrong. And if they show me in the word, well, I'm wrong. And I've been wrong. I, I'm not going to lie. Then I have to agree with them. I'm like, hey, it is what it is. It, it tears what it tears. You know what I'm saying? All right. So anyway, <laughs> God bless y'all. Thank y'all for y'all support. <laughs> I do appreciate it because I'm thinking I ain't getting nowhere. But anyway, and, and I'm not finding fault. But, but anyway, let me keep on with it. Jesus said these words. He said, I came down from heaven. He said, not to do my own will. This is the pattern. I'm not doing my own thing, but the will of him that sent me. But I'm doing God's thing. I'm doing God the Father's thing. Whatever he wants. And Jesus, even the garden, in the garden of Gethsemane, he said this, these words. He said, he said in so many words. He said, Father, he said, let this cup, boy, cup, this cup of suffering, you know, is possible to pass from me in so many words. He said, but nevertheless, he said, not my will, yes. not my will. What do you do with this? He said, but your will be done. Now, I'm going with this somewhere. I'm not going to keep on the oneness trinity thing, all right? But I'm going somewhere with this. Brothers and sisters, we cannot build. We cannot build again rebellion against God's will. Yes. When we get started, if I build again those things which I once destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. <clears throat> you cannot build again. A transgressor is someone who violates God's word. You cannot do that. And you should not allow yourself to do that. Because we are capable as Christians of building a rebellion against God in our hearts. You got to protect the good that you start. You got to keep the weeds out. You got to keep the devil out of your heart and out of your mind. I have to do the same thing. We have to, the Bible tells us that we have to keep ourselves in the love of God, praying in the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have to keep ourselves in the love of God while the whole world can do whatever, but we came to do, or, or rather we got saved so that, uh, so that we can do God's will. And God's will is for yes. us to live an exemplary life, yeah. to reach other people yes. for the kingdom. <laughs> and how do you reach other people for the kingdom? You got to live it. You got to put God first. And I have to put God first in my life. No matter what I have to sacrifice, no matter what I have to give up, if I'm going to God's heaven, I have to put God first. If you are going to God's heaven, you got to put God's for God first. Amen. Jesus could not bring salvation to man until he put God first. And he put God first 
before the foundations of the earth. He said, I'm willing to go to earth. I'm willing to put on human flesh. I'm willing to do the very thing that God would have me to do. And Jesus not only said it, not only did he think about it, but he did it. He was on go from day one uh, to die on the cross and take our sins upon his life. He did not come to the earth to start a career. Jesus did not come to the earth to be a carpenter boy. He did not come to the earth uh, to find a good job somewhere uh, or to amass a whole bunch of money. He did not come to the earth to get him a wife and begin to start a family. That was not the will of God the Father in his yes. life uh, to get with a wife or something. Right. It, it does not matter if it's good, if it's a good thing or a bad thing. You see, it's not all about what's right and what's wrong. It's all about the will of God. And my question is tonight, yeah. are you doing the will of God? Do you have enough salvation to follow God and say, not my will, but thy will be done. I am going to talk right. I'm going to walk right. I'm going to dress right. I'm going to think right. I'm going to watch the very things that I look at on TV. I'm going to watch out for the very things that I look at on YouTube. I'm going to keep it. I'm not going to allow no unclean thing to influence me away from the will of God. If I have to lay down uh, whatever it is, whether good or bad, I'm willing to lay it all down. Jesus brought salvation because he said God comes first. Uh, and everything else comes second. If God does not want me to eat that, I'm not going to eat it. If God does not want me to drink that, I'm not going to drink it. Everybody else can drink it. Everybody else can eat it. But not me because I came to do the will of God. It was okay for Jesus to marry. According to scripture, it was okay. But that was not what God wanted him to do. He did not want him to get married. He came to die on the cross. He came to, to do what God said and do what God said alone. And he did it. And he died. The will of God brought him to tears because a part of that will was God the Father had to forsake Jesus yes. when he was on that cross. Yes. Words that he despised the shame. He didn't even like it. And shamefully, is oh, you know they hung him up there, man. And I don't even know did he have a, any clothes on when they hung him up there. Did he? I, I'm, I'm trying to be accurate here. I don't want to say the Bible wrong. I don't think the Word of God said that he had. I know in Hollywood they put clothes on him, the little thing covering him, but he despised the shame, man. He was beaten. He ain't like God. <laughs> Jesus wanted to do that. I just want to just be hung up there and take pleasure in it. No, he did not. But for the joy that was set before him. See, the Lord's joy was to bring you and I to God the Father and he said I'm going to do this Amen. though I don't like it brother remember this you're going to have to do some things you don't like listen you're going to have to sacrifice some things that you're not going to want to sacrifice but if you're going to walk with God and if you're going to be saved you're going to have to sacrifice this ain't no get rich thing and prosperity gospel. And people say about my, the way I'm talking, you understand what I'm saying, though. This isn't no, you know, people want to do this prosperity thing. I want to become a millionaire. That's great. But if it costs God, I mean, a relationship with God, we shouldn't be doing it. Because yes. that's what you're all about. One brother preached the message entitled Disturbed. And, and I say, you know, the rich man can't take money with you. You can't take this stuff with you. You can't take nothing with you. And you can keep on putting stuff before God all you want. Yes. But when you die and go to hell, you can't say that you were not warned. That's right. And that's the reason why, and I'm about to shut my mouth, Jesus, when he went to hell, 
The father could not hold him down there, meaning that he could not say, you know what, I, I'm not going to let him come up. Because Jesus did not do his own thing. He did God's thing. And because he did God's thing, he, he gave his life and he took it back. And he rose from the grave. He rose from the grave. The musicians can come, come on. He, he rose from the grave on the third day because he said, you know, he didn't do his own thing. And now because he didn't do his own thing, Jesus is seated at the right hand of God the Father. My question is, are you doing your own thing tonight? Have you built again those things which you once destroyed? Is their rebellion, have you built unbelief in your life? And see, and this stuff here, this stuff in Matthew, Mark, Luke, John is not just for basic beginners. These things are for us forever. We have to live this word from the day we got saved and believe on it and be and, and be children. And when I say be children, I'm talking about have the attitude of a child. I can trust what God said. We got to do it God's way. And then when we do it God's way, God will come back and bless you because Jesus has the highest seat in the universe now because he went to the lowest place that man can possibly go outside the lake of fire. He went to hell for your sins and for my sins, not for his own sins, but he rose on the third day. And now he's with the Father and he's waiting on you to say, not my will, not my thing, but God, I want to do your thing. I want to do what you would have me to do and sacrifice what you would have me to sacrifice. I want to go, listen to this, you remember when you prayed? I'll go where you would have me to go. I'll go where you would have me to go. I'll be what you would have me to be. And I'll say what you would have me to say. With that being said, our heads bowed and eyes closed in reverence to God.
Stay right with God. Love yourself. Love your salvation. Love your God. And at this time, we're going to go ahead and dismiss in prayer. Remember Bible study Tuesday night at, what, 730. May God bless June 2nd. Let's do this. Let's dismiss in prayer. Special church service Wednesday night. Special church service Wednesday night at 730. Come. You got to come. It's just I'm just going to put the word surprise out there, you know. So um, just come on out and just check it out. And we're looking forward to seeing you and, and pray some heavenly angels. Keep their hands of protection upon on you as you make your journey out the door, okay? Because he will. I know I've been going, I don't have coronavirus. And, no. and I've been going outside. Guess what? I don't even know of anyone who has it. I, I think I got a cousin that has it way over in Virginia, but Rick, he's doing real good. So... Uh, come on out, man. You know, Amen. come on outside. Yeah. I remember some kids come to my house. Man, can you come? Let's walk to the mall, man. And I'm sitting there, no, go to the mall. Come on, man. Come on out the house. Come to come to church, okay? God bless you. Let's dismiss in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord, for all the things that you have done. God, let us remember that you are a healer and that you are a protector and that we are children of you out of the kingdom, children of God. Lord, let us not forsake your will by staying home and, and just and, and not coming out to the house of the Lord over fear. But God, let us do what you would have us to do and let us walk wisely too. Let us walk in wisdom with you, dear God, and follow you in everything that we do. Going where you would have us to go. Saying what you would have us to say and being what you would have us to be. We ask all this in Jesus' name. God bless you.